Well, today I'm going to be working on this little transfer auger, but this is for unloading 18 wheelers, specifically a grain trailer on an 18 wheeler. You know, they dump the grain out the bottom in that hopper, so it goes into this one and then it comes up this auger and dumps into another hopper, which goes up the main auger into your grain bin. So the reason you have these little guys is it's a go-between between, between the 18 wheeler trailer and your main loading auger because it's too difficult to align those trailers and other reasons <laughs> so you can manipulate this thing in place and yeah anyway these things have a very specific use on the farm this one is electric um, the guy bought it used and he wants me to convert it to hydraulic because they run the main logger go up into their grain bin off their tractor it's a PTO drive so he wanted this one to be hydraulic drive and that's what we're doing today is putting a hydraulic motor on it. So the first thing we're going to do is just start ripping all this stuff off. So I'm having trouble turning the thing by hand. I finally got it to go backwards. And look at all that stuff I'm getting out there. I've only turned it a couple turns. I think the previous owner had a pack rat. I had to move over to the big door of my garage because I was dying of a heat stroke out there in the sun. And just to prove to you that I'm not making this crap up. It is 73, heading up to 74 quickly outside, okay? This morning, it was like 32 when I came out here, all right? But literally, a few days ago, look at this. I haven't reset it yet. Negative 9.7. That was just a couple days ago, all right? This is why I'm dying of a heat stroke. Kansas is fun in the spring. UPS just came by and delivered the hydraulic motor and a couple of these weld-on hubs. In the past when I've done these hydraulic conversions, I've made my own uh, couplers, made these hubs, did everything, but these things, these weld-on hubs are so cheap that it is not worth my time to make them. So I'm going to use a weld-on hub there, make a plate on the CNC plasma table, probably, I think. Um, so it'll go here, and then this other hub will go where the sprocket is. So we'll face each other kind of like that. And then the two plates will be together, you know, right here and right here. And then I'll put a bolt through them out over here. Um, it's a shear coupler, is what they call it. Because uh, the, the hydraulics on the tractor, they will maybe disengage. I don't know. Um, Usually when you use the hydraulics off of a tractor, you end up having to jam something in in the lever because the detent doesn't stay in when you're running these augers. So you just have the relief valve that kicks in to stop this auger. So if you get your foot stuck in the auger, then the relief valve kicks in, but it doesn't kick off the power to it. So then your foot is just stuck in there because this motor keeps trying to turn. You know, it's at full pressure, whatever the relief valve is set at. So um but the, having a small bolt in out here that bolt will shear off once it gets up to pressure you know close to pressure whatever and uh then that will disconnect this here so it's a safety thing now obviously if you can just stick the detent in on the tractor and it stays in and runs this and they don't you know do a hard bypass on it somehow then the detent will just kick and it'll shut off and it'll work like it's supposed to. But always have another safety. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Got these Allen set screw thingies to break loose. I'm gonna go ahead and take them all the way out. And then I'm gonna put some WD-40 down in there. But ah. I'll just bring it back when I get the puller on there. Get ready to pull. This shaft doesn't have a center in it. And I'll show you a little trick for how to deal with that. All right. But completely remove your set screws. That was the point I was trying to make. Did I say that? Always completely remove them when you're trying to pull something off. When you're pulling a spoked aluminum pulley like this, do not put your puller on the outside out there. 
Nope, nope, nope. Um, you need to get close to the hub as you can. Uh, it would be better to have different arms than this, but these don't fit in there correctly. So the way to solve that is to put the strap iron behind it. Hook onto that strap iron. And since you already don't have enough hands to put a puller on anyway, then I like to clamp them on there. These little clamps work pretty good. Uh, you could probably even tape them on there. I don't know. Get super glue them. I don't care what you do. Some way to hold that on. Since there's no centering hole in the shaft, let's put a nut on the end of your puller here. There. Like that. Right behind your clamp, but you get the idea, right? Also, this shaft that's sticking out, you know, if you have any shafts sticking out past your pulley, make sure that is shiny. Get in there and clean that up. Use some emery cloth, a little file, whatever it takes, and get that shaft shiny. Make sure there's no burrs on it, because you don't want to be pulling this pulley off over that rust. All right, I got it snugged up. Let's see if this thing comes off there if I bring it. Nice. That was too easy. We're not off yet, but oh yeah, that's what I like. There we go. There, pulley's pretty much loose now. I see my finger, so I can smash. Ooh, that falls off of there. Ah! Got it. Awesome. Got the shaft cleaned up nice. Got the keyway pulled out of there. I'm just going to throw away that keyway key. Got the key pulled out of there. That's what it is. I'm going to throw away that key. It was rusted and nasty. So that'll slide on there. What I'm going to do next is, uh, well, I don't know which I'm actually going to do next. Uh, I'm going to fire up the CNC plasma cutter because I want to make a bracket. Holds this motor. And then I want to make these two plates here to bolt together. This one, I don't know why, it's got quite a bit of bump there on the lead in and lead out kind of thing going on. I don't know what that's all about. This one's got a little bit of it there, but not near as bad. So, I don't know, stuff like that. I'm still trying to figure out with the machine, but dang. It almost fits on there. Can you see that? Yeah, I'm over there. Okay. Like, I seriously think I could just put that in the press and press that on there. Uh, it's just awesome. I'm excited. Woohoo! And we'll just put the weld to it here real quick. It doesn't take a lot of weld to hold these things in place. You know, you don't have to weld this thing solid all the way around. And I'm definitely not going to weld where the bolt goes. Because I don't want the socket hitting that weld when you try to tighten it up. I may end up having to use an end wrench, but whatever. I don't want the wrenches hitting. I don't want the bolt head hitting that weld either. So I'm just going to give it a few good long tack welds. I don't know, four, three, something like that. Dodge the set screws. Dodge the bolt. Doesn't take much. Now I'm going to stick this plate in my press and hopefully I can bend it. I'm a little nervous about that because I'm going to make it a U. I'm afraid this side is going to come up and hit the bottle jack. Um, I'm working on a design for a new press. Um, I got so many projects I'm working on right now. I'm starting to feel a bit overwhelmed, honestly. Getting this shop set up and moved and redoing everything is it's really been very stressful. Um, I would use the bender for my live hydraulic press, my portable press, but obviously that is not wide enough. 
Um, this is what I need, is this style. That way I can bend it, you know, around the die this way. So, I need to build a bigger one of these. And, yeah. Someday. But anyway, you don't care about all that rambling. Let's see if I can bend this thing and totally ruin it now that I got it all cut out. Sometimes you get lucky. I don't know if it's a good enough light over here for you to see all that or not, but let's go see if it fits. I'm excited. Woohoo! Oh, yellow. Cool. Ha ha ha. Awesome. That is awesome. I think it's even centered. Well, it's the next morning. Parts were painted last night. Hopefully they are dry this morning and we can assemble this thing and I can boot this thing out of here. Uh, I slid this collar back so this one is actually slid back too. So this collar here, this hub, is on both shafts. I, about halfway on both of them. That, that way this motor is aligned as close as possible. You know what I'm saying? That kind of holds this motor in place is the way to do it. As you can see, it's locks it in place right there. Then you can tighten down these bolts. Probably a little hard to tell, but there is a gap between these two, just a few thousandths. And then the bolt, just barely tight, got a lock nut on there. So this will shear if something happens, you know, and then this motor will just spin and the auger won't have any power to it. So it's a safety coupler that way. Uh, I would really love to show you this thing working. Really, really would, but um, they're not going to use it probably for at least another month. Depends on when they get around to cleaning out their grain bins. And they were thinking about doing it maybe the first of May and or the first of April here. So if I can uh, catch them when they're actually cleaning out their grain bins and using this thing, I would love to show you a little bit of what this actually does. So I'm sure there's some of you that have no clue what this is about. Doggy, nope. You, no, no, doggy, you can't run away. Come on. But the idea behind this is you wheel this under an 18 wheeler uh, because you can't put a regular unloading auger under an 18 wheeler. So, this is something you can move by hand real easy. And then your big unloading auger sits right here and goes clear up to your big grain bins and dumps it on top of those. So, this is just a transfer auger, that's what they call it. It goes from the 18 wheeler to the auger. That loads your end bins. It's kind of a go-between. So why on earth would somebody want to pay me to convert one of these augers over to hydraulic drive when the manufacturer already makes these things hydraulic driven? Well, it comes down to economics. The customer was able to pick up this electric drive one dirt cheap. Well, I say dirt cheap. Very reasonable, let's put it that way. And even including my bill of converting this thing over to hydraulic he's probably half price of what a new auger is. And he does not have electricity out at his grain storage site. Since his main loading and unloading auger is PTO driven, it just makes sense for him to use a hydraulic drive auger since the tractor is already there running the other auger. To run this thing with electricity, he'd have to drag his generator out there, then he'd have the generator and the tractor running, and that doesn't really make sense. I can't stand the look of those galvanized washers up on the top of that thing. So I went ahead and cut out a couple oval washers. I think that'll look a lot better up there. So I'm going to go stick these on real quick and then show you what it looks like once they're mounted. I then got dirty in a hurry. Apparently with a little bit of wind we got going, it, all the dirt stuck to it. But I'm going to take these off and put these on here. I think that looks much, much better. Much better. I like that. 
If you enjoy watching farm related videos, go check out Jesse. His channel is JM Farm and Cattle. He's my neighbor to the north of me. Well, neighbor by the wide open prairie standards. So go check out his channel. I'll put some links here. He has some really good videos about farm life and I really enjoy watching them all.